To determine if CHF3 is a polar or nonpolar molecule, let's first look at the Lewis structure. When we do that, that'll tell us where the valence electrons are and how the atoms are arranged in the molecule. This is the Lewis structure for CHF3, and when we look at it, we can see we have those fluorine atoms around the carbon, and then we have that one hydrogen. So just looking at it, it doesn't seem to be a very symmetrical molecule. Further, fluorine is a very electronegative atom. In fact, it's the most electronegative atom on the periodic table. Hydrogen, not so much. So there's a big difference in our electronegativity on one side of the molecule. We really do need, though, to look at the three-dimensional structure, the molecular geometry of CHF3, to understand if this is going to result in a polar or nonpolar molecule. So here's a space-filling representation of CHF3. You can see the green, those are the fluorines, the carbons in the middle, and then on top we have that hydrogen. Because of this, it really isn't symmetrical. You have all that electronegativity. Those fluorines are not going to share the valence electrons equally, the ones that are in the bonds between atoms. And we're going to end up with the hydrogen being more positive, and then the fluorines, that whole group, being more negative. That means we'll have a dipole, and we'll have positive and negative poles. And if you have poles, you have a polar molecule. Dr. B with the polarity of CHF3, and thanks for watching.